Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to look at a variety of destroyed pistons. So when we look over these pistons, we'll start with this one. This is a piston out of our Silver S2000 that we used to race. And this is some of my handiwork. I missed a gear, I dropped a valve, and you just have this carnage where the valve tip is bouncing around in the cylinder. And it actually, at some point, it's poked a hole through the piston with the valve stem. So this is a catastrophic failure. If you've ever had an engine drop a valve, there's not much question of what went wrong. You have to go back through, uh, sort your valve train. Are you experiencing valve float? Are you changing the speed of the engine at such a gross rate that the valve train loses control? You know, whether it be a money shift or a miss shift um, and get the valve train sorted to avoid these types of problems. This piston is a nitrous lean out. So you have this big blow torched area where the, the charge got so superheated and out of control that it started to melt the aluminum at a high rate. And if you look close at it, it actually looks like the same way aluminum would look if you hit it with a plasma torch. So plasma cutter, plasma torch, it just, it really just blows the material out. And the other thing that's cool about this is this black area on the skirt. And how you get this black area on the skirt is not enough piston wall clearance for the temperature of the part. Now this couldn't have been solved with piston wall clearance. Like you couldn't increase the piston wall clearance and get this to go away. This part was overheated. And once it was overheated, it grew enough that it displaced the oil and started to drag the aluminum up and down the bore, which is what gives you these uh, black roses is what a lot of engine guys will call them. Um, but it's a prize that nobody wins and this part is junk. Also, if you look at the top of this piston, it looks kind of like it's peppery, uh, rough, like it's been sandblasted. This is just another telltale of overheating the piston. So if you're experiencing this black death on the skirt or this peppering on the top, you've simply overheated the piston. This is a 2JZ that was tuned on race gas and then the customer ran it on pump gas on the same tune. So you have the same black death uh, up and down the skirt where the piston was overheated. Um, and then you have the areas that are thinnest on the crown of the piston around the intake valve reliefs where it actually um, chipped off. Now, a fair share of people will look at this part and say that the piston wasn't strong enough, the, the, the intake valve relief area was too thin, but if the tuning is correct, you don't experience these types of problems. This is a tuning error. Uh, this actually is some more of my handiwork. This is a Mustang piston, a bit of a push rod uh, based engine that had a supercharger. And this is a very lightweight piston. It's uh, the, the, the crown has been milled, it's pretty thin. Um, and what happened is when I detonated the engine, it actually, the increase of cylinder pressure that happens during detonation actually pushed the top of the piston down. So this big dent in the crown of the piston is not supposed to be there. Uh, I put that there. And then you have the other telltale is the ring line is lifted. And what happens is this area was pushed down and it starts to actually peel this ring line back. So when you have a piston that's been detonated, sometimes the ring line will get crushed and sometimes the ring line will peel back. Um, if you could watch this in really, really slow motion with this part where it's got these big chips around the intake valve, it'll actually start to peel that material back. Um, this part wasn't run that long that once it started to detonate, I stopped running it and went to figure out what had gone wrong in it. But if I had run this piston longer, it would have peeled this area back where it would look more like this one. This is a factory uh, cast piston. And this is a good example of the differences in material because this piston's actually cracked um, all the way through to the ring land. So the only thing that's holding this piston together right now, holding this piece of the skirt on, is the rings. And this is the difference between um, a 4032 or a factory hypoeutectic or a cast piston and the fact that they will crack, whereas these will just melt and deform. And that's just the metallurgy differences between the material. This is a cool one. This is a, a guy with a super named Jostani, and he was trying to beat the stock block record. 
and I believe that he made uh, over 1,100 horsepower of this engine. And shortly thereafter, a connecting rod broke and he just ended up with this pile of parts. So the, the rings are intact. Um, this wasn't a fuel related problem like some of these other pistons. This is just simply too much power for the connecting rod. When the connecting rod broke, just everything goes in the garbage and you end up with some, uh, some desk art. All of these problems can be avoided, but the most important thing is um, when you look at a part, you look at a piston, you've built an engine, you've had it tuned, and now it has a problem. And you go back and you, you're desperately seeking someone to blame, whether it be the piston manufacturer or the tuner. Um, and these are just some of the telltales that you can look at and try to understand what happened to your engine to avoid it happening again. But any of these components used correctly, this isn't a manufacturing problem, this is an end user problem, and they can all be avoided. So we just have to use the right fuel for the octane, ignition timing, and boost we're going to use, and be mindful that no matter how good the parts are, you can break stuff if you lean on it too hard or if you make mistakes. So if you've experienced one of these failures and you're having trouble understanding how it happened, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks, and I'll see you next week.